Good morning, both of you. Brian, um, Ralph Russo from the Associated Press. Uh, it's probably hard to sum up Tommy Reese's career in a, in a couple of minutes, but if you could, uh, what has been the characteristic that has allowed him to thrive during a career that has had a lot of ups and, and great ups and some downs? Well, I think it's probably a, a short memory um, and the ability to handle um, all that goes into being the quarterback in Notre Dame, and I mean the scrutiny and certainly the, um, you know, at times, if you look on his career, um, you know, a, a very passionate fan base uh, when it comes to uh, evaluating his play, and he's been able to handle that uh, week in and week out. It, it takes an incredible amount of confidence in one's own ability uh, to go out there week in and week out when you're under such scrutiny uh, when it comes to your play. And um, he's, he's going to be obviously uh, remembered as somebody that has persevered and overcome uh, some highs and some lows at the same time. Next question. Over in the back, Pete. Hi, Coach Flood, uh, Nate McAborski from Yankees Magazine. Uh, could you just talk a little bit about uh, kind of being home for the holidays, I mean, being so close to New Brunswick here and what that kind of means to your players? I think being a, being a part of this bowl game now for the second time as a program, for me as a coach, for the second time, you know, first as a head coach, this is a very special venue for us. And even though the, the proximity to campus is there, we're still spending a week in New York City. And when you spend the week in New York City around the holidays, there's no better place in the world to be around Christmas than New York City with everything it has to offer. So I think even though we, you know, we practice at our facility, so we have some of the comforts at home you know, as we go through the football part of our week, you know, when we're in New York City, when we're doing the other events that surround the bowl game, it's a, it's a really special, special atmosphere and a special time for our players. Show your hand to the back. Yeah, Mike Pesca, NPR. My question is, in bowl games in general, the number of trick plays seems to go up. Just um, going for it on fourth down seems a bit looser. My question is to both of you, why do you think this is, and do your defenses do anything special to prepare for that? You know, we, we've gone for quite a bit on fourth down this year. I think that has a, a little bit more to do with our inconsistencies at kicker than anything else. You know, the, the trick plays, Maybe sometimes you give football coaches too much time and, uh, and we get a little bit creative. But uh, I think when you play defense, if you're going to play good defense, it needs to be sound versus everything. And uh, as, you, as you talk to defensive coaches and defensive coordinators, uh, they're constantly chasing the, the potential ghosts that are out there and, and working on trick plays, exotic plays, you know, whatever it is you call them. You know, I think that's, that's part of everybody's bull prep. Yeah, you're trying to win one game, right? You know, so during the season, it's a – uh, you know, it's a marathon to a conference championship or, you know, a BCS game, whereas this is a one, you know, one game. So you're, you know, you're taking shots that you probably wouldn't take during the regular season. Taking that, you know, that risk goes up a little bit because it's a, it's a one game opportunity. Um, and, you know, you're not playing for the national championship here. You know, you're playing for a trophy that means a lot and a win. Uh, so I think that risk factor um, becomes one that you're willing to, to, to work with. Gentlemen, over on the right. Eric Hansen from the South Bend Tribune. This question is for Brian Kelly. Uh, Coach, how do you feel like your running game has evolved? Are you happy with where it is now? And then also, how did Cam McDaniel avoid kind of being the odd guy out in that big running back rotation? Well, as you know, I, I thought that our running game was one that certainly uh, needed to match with who the running back situation ended up being. We were trying to find out who that back was, um, whether it was Folston or it was Atkinson. Um, you know, we started with, uh, you know, a, a rotation there, and I think we've kind of settled on Folston as, as somebody that, you know, would start the game. And then we lose three offensive linemen along the way, you know. So uh, that has kind of made it uh, um, an uneasy situation relative to the continuity. But um, we have to be able to run the football to be an effective offense. 
so again, I think the running back situation has provided us a little bit more clarity. Uh, and, you know, going into this game, we've had plenty of work with the unit. So, you know, again, uh, we would like to have those guys that have been, you know, three-year starters and Chris Watt and, and Nick Martin in there, and, and certainly uh, they give us a lot. But I think we've been able to get some continuity with the guys that are in there. And now with the running back position as such, I think Cam McDaniel now has really been able to be utilized for what his talents are. And we think he is a very instinctive runner. He probably has as good instincts uh, as we have at the running back position. Very intuitive, can see things. Uh, and that's why he has found, it, found his niche at that position. Second row on the right. This is also for Brian Kelly, Pete Byrne, WSBT. Coach, you just talked about being here, playing for one win and for this trophy. But could you talk about what the difference a win would be for you guys finishing with a win, finishing with nine wins this year as opposed to eight, just kind of all that goes into that? Well, the game itself, you know, first of all, <laughs> you know, you hear, well, you know, it's, you know, it's not a BCS game. You know, Coach and I, we're, we're competitors, first of all. I mean, so any game that you put in front of us, you know, we want to win the game. And so it, it doesn't matter about the venue. Uh, we love the venue. We love the bowl. We love what's happened for our kids this week. But we're competitive. And so a game, you know, the old phrase, a game worth playing is a game worth winning. So that, that's where we start this. And then uh, you look at your season, and you certainly want to finish with a win because it definitely um, it, it helps you in that offseason, you know, in terms of your evaluations. And then finally, uh, you know, we, we, we've seen eight wins, you know, in our program. You know, we've seen eight. We've seen 12. You know, nine is definitely one that, that – looks better for us as a group. So uh, I think uh, that's probably third in the list. I think it's a game um, of football that all of our guys want to win because we're, we're, we're competitors. Angelo in the back. Uh, actually, let's start here on the right first. Go ahead, sir. Uh, Kyle, could you – Coach Kelly just mentioned the difference between one win here or there. I mean – what is the difference for you guys between seven and six and six and seven? And does that seem bigger than a one-win difference, winning record versus non-winning record? I think the, the first thing, and Brian alluded to it, if they put the scoreboard on, we want to win. So we know the scoreboard's going to be on tomorrow, so we're going to do everything we can to be 1-0 and in that game. And then ultimately you look at the season in its entirety, and I think there's a big difference between seven and six and six and seven, you know, a winning record and a losing record. I mean, that's fairly obvious. So to our senior class, Winning this game is very important. We remember what it's like just a year ago you know, to lose a bowl game against a good program in overtime. It's not a good feeling in that locker room for the team. It's not a good feeling for those seniors who got to walk out that door for the last time. You know, those memories are, are, are burned in our minds. And they've worked this bowl prep like a football team that's trying to make sure that that doesn't happen again. Angelo. Uh, Angel DiCarlo, WNDU coach in the back. Uh, Brian Kelly. Um, can you just talk about how, what the week's been like for your guys and how much you guys have enjoyed this experience and then also the, the rich history of Notre Dame in New York and um, how important being in New York uh, means to this program um, over its history? Well, I've been to a number of bowl games and uh, BCS games, and uh, I can tell you that in terms of the organization, um, in terms of the detail, um, where you're going, what you're seeing, uh, you're really leaving here with an understanding of, of this great city. Uh, you, you also have in the Pinstripe Bowl, um, you know, the backing of the Yankee organization, Randy Levine, Mark Holtzman have done an incredible job putting together a bowl game that I can tell you after experiencing BCS Bowls is as well run as any. So our kids have been part of that process of being part of this bowl season. And so they're going to walk away feeling – you know, they were part of this bowl season as, as much as any other program. And, and that's a tribute to the Pinstripe Bowl and the Yankee organization. They do it right. Uh, they also leave with an understanding of the tradition of New York and Yankee Stadium and how many supporters that we have here and Subway alums. We were at the New York Stock Exchange and, you know, I with, we were with captains and um, we were on the floor and, um, you know, one of, uh, one of those uh, – uh, employees came up to us who, who was a 53 grad uh, of uh, Notre Dame who had been working the floor for 50 years. You know, just getting that kind of 
um, contact. Uh, I think our players really understand how important New York is to Notre Dame. Two questions in hand. We'll start gentleman on the left here in the middle. This is for Coach Kelly. Chris Hine from the Chicago Tribune. You mentioned how the program has seen eight wins. It's seen 12 wins. When you take a step back and kind of analyze things from a, from a faraway perspective, What's it going to take for the program to see 11, 12 wins more consistently and, and not eight? Well, we hope to get to nine. Um, and, and then I think uh, if you look at the last couple of years, uh, we were probably as close to being a eight-win team last year as we were a 12-win team. And I think we were probably as close to being a 10-win team this year uh, as we were an eight-win team. So. Uh, we're very close to being able to put double-digit wins uh, each year. Um, and, and that's really the goal, right, in terms of getting your program to double-digit wins and competing, um, certainly for, for BCS opportunities. And that's, that's where we need to be. We're close. We're not there consistently yet. We Certainly the record is what it is. And now our attention is winning this game and um, making the playoffs. You know, it sounds like an NFL um, you know, line, but now it will be about getting this program uh, to, to play for a playoff spot each and every year. And that's going to at least mean double digit wins each year. Directly in front of you on the right. Uh, Pete Sampson, Irish Illustrated for Brian. Um, I realize the priority here is to kind of send your seniors out. But realistically, what kind of bridge can this game be for younger guys next year? You know, what, what's the realistic carryover that you can get out of tomorrow? Well, I think it started when we had our first practice, you know, the ability for them to um, practice and be part of, you know, this preparation, um, as well as culmination, the game, right, and getting a chance to be part of this game and be part of um, the, the bowl season and understanding, you know, the reward that it comes to having a great season. So they've experienced a lot of the stuff that we want them to experience, and that is having success lead you to these kinds of opportunities. And finishing it off with a win will be a small part of that, but will be a part of the experience that they've had. And so they'll get a chance to play in the game. They've experienced uh, the practices leading up to it. Uh, and then they'll get the opportunity uh, to look at where they are uh, after this season. And I think that's where this begins to now take shape for him. Over on the left here. Mike Vorkanoff, Star Ledger. Uh, Kyle, what does the game tomorrow mean for the program in showing its readiness for the Big Ten next year? I think, you know, tomorrow is an opportunity for the program to be 1-0. And if you get an opportunity to, to play in a game, in a bowl game, in a venue like this, against a storied program like Notre Dame, it's always an opportunity to showcase your program. This is a, a young football team. It'll be a much different football team next year when our senior class leaves and our freshman class comes in, and that's kind of the nature of college football. These teams are very different year to year. So I don't know what it'll mean ultimately going forward, but I think what it is, it's a, it's a great showcase for our program right now to play against a great program like Notre Dame. And then ultimately when that game is over, you know, we'll look to our future in the Big Ten. A few last questions. There are any Ralph on the right? Kyle, uh, what's the difference between your offense with Paul James healthy and not? And do you think that he is uh, what, we'll, what we'll see on Saturday is the Paul James from the beginning of the season? I think there's been a significant difference this year. You know, PJ has been able to make big plays in the running game. And he's consistently been tough to tackle by the first defender. Uh, he's He's been a difference maker for us on offense. He opens up all the play action game that we want to get to in every game plan, regardless of who we're playing against. Gives us an opportunity to push the ball down the field because people have to commit more defenders to, to stop in the run game. I think he's as healthy as he's been since the beginning of the year. Do I think he's 100%? I don't know that any player in, in, the, in the country is 100% right now at this time of year. But I think having the ball prep and having the time from the last game till now has allowed him to be about as healthy as he's been since the beginning of the year. Any last questions? Or if there are no further questions, Coach Kelly, Coach Floyd, we appreciate you coming here again today. Good luck to both of you tomorrow. Thank you.